worthy, Lord.
scriptures real quick. You don't have to eat a down. You should uh, write these down or memorize them or mark them. I think they're good. In uh, Psalm 73, start with 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? God, amen. He's in heaven. Amen. We have him. So then afterward receive me in glory. Whom have I whom have I in heaven? But thee and thine upon the earth that I desire beside thee. None other on earth should be desired beside God, amen. Because the psalm said, He is our everything. It says my flesh and my heart fall. But God is my strength and yes, my heart yes. and my portion forever. Yeah. He is our portion. Yes, yes. Amen. And that means, like I said, we, we have no other desire. Amen. Right. It says, but, in, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God yeah. that I may declare all his works. Amen. Amen. We've got to put our trust in him. Amen. Yeah. There he works. He's going to be there with us. He's going to be there beside us. He's going to be fighting our battles for us. Amen. Right. Right. And then like uh, all the other nations, you know, they've lost battles. God has never lost. Never Amen. Lost. Never lost. Amen. And God beside us, we can never lose. Amen. 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 We want to learn to trust in him. Keep his word. Glory to God. Amen. Just like I said, with you and God, you're a overwhelming majority. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You got to learn to throw everything to Him. A lot of people not try to think things out on their own, try to do things on their own, but we need to let God do it. Amen. Move aside, let God take control. That's where a lot of people have problems. They want, they want to be in control. Amen. It doesn't work like that. You got to let God be in control. Amen. So let's just worship Him this morning.
chorus again without any instruments a cappella. I want to bless the Lord this morning. Did you come to bless God this morning? Or did you just come to be entertained? Because you came to be entertained, you're in the wrong place. We come to bless God this morning. Amen. Why why should we not bless the creator of everything? Come on. The one who gives us life. Each and every one of us know where we're going, right? We're not going down, we're going up. Amen. God has redeemed us, so I want us to sing. Put that back up with you, please. Amen. <laughs> and if we would sing, bless the Lord of my soul, just a cappella, and just begin to worship God, and just think about the goodness of God to your life. Amen. Go ahead. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh, my souls, worship his holy Surely, goodness 
and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Isn't that wonderful? You know what? It also means this. It means this, that it will overtake you. I mean, you think about somebody following you. This is going to overtake you, Brother Ryan. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the day. It's going to overtake you. Amen. I'm excited about that. I need some goodness and mercy to overtake me, Sister Jones. Amen. Overtake me. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just get all over me. Amen. Just become a part of me. Amen. Glory to God. I, I'm excited about God. What He's doing in the house of God. Amen. In this house and in this house, God is doing some great and mighty things. And we appreciate Him. Do we not? Give Him a hand clap this morning. Oh. All right. All right. Good job. He's dancing over here. That's all right. Amen. Kids can dance. Amen. Very so uh, I just, uh, we're doing this thing with the kids. Uh, uh, I forgot what we call it. Penny March. Penny March. That's it. <laughs> anyway, uh, if I need some help this morning, how many is going to help me this morning? I need some help. Come on. Come on. Can I get some help this morning? Come on. Come on. Come on. Get a bucket. Get your change out, people. Glory to God. They're going to come after it. Amen. Glory to God. You got enough buckets? I hope so. We may have to share. All right. All right. Go get your change. Go out there, buddy.
legitimate person in this place. We pray your blessings be upon them, God, as they sowed in your kingdom, but the reap of harvest time. God, we claim your work for this time. Meet the needs of the church through this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. It's Father's Day. Amen. I need all the fathers to come up front. All the fathers. All the fathers. All of them. All the fathers come up front. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I need my uh, spiritual father up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the fathers. Lord, this is my spiritual father. Amen. He's been an example to me all my spiritual life. Amen. And he has instructed me and encouraged me. I remember when he asked me to teach. I said, brother, you're talking to the wrong person. I said, I don't like being up in front of people. He said, I'm just doing what God said. you got to do what God says. I said, oh, God's sorry. i got to listen. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I am today what? Because of him. Because of the, I mean, we spent lots of hours together in prayer. We fasted together. I mean, we've done a lot of things together. And I so much appreciate him this morning. And I know one thing about my pastor is that he loves the word of God and I have this Bible for you. It's called the Life Application Study Bible. And he loves the word of God and there's two things I know about him. He loves to read God's word and he prays. And if you ask him to pray, he will pray. Amen. Amen. There's not a doubt in my mind. He will pray for you. Amen. And so brother, we appreciate you. All right. Okay. If you pass these out, if you want. Um, we, 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 we try to figure out what to get for the men. I know what about most men. They like ice cream. <laughs> I hardly ever met a man that does not like ice cream. <laughs> and, and, and so I know the best gift, amen, is a Dairy Queen. <laughs> amen. And, and so we want to bless you, fathers, and we appreciate you and the job you do. Uh, I, I mean, it's not easy to be a father in the Lord today. It's, it's a rough place that, that we're raising our children up, and we need all the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the kindness and the love that we can give. Amen? Uh, we, we've got to learn to listen to the Lord about our children and our grandchildren. Some of us are raising our grandchildren. <laughs> And, and so we, we've got to begin to listen to God because God's word is very specific in how to raise our children. He said, raise them up in the way they should go, yes. and they will not depart from it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so we as fathers, we are to let Christ be seen in us because that's the only time some kids are going to see is Christ in you. Amen? And so, uh, you're not just a father in this church. You're a father on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, Thursday, Friday, right. Saturday. Yeah. You're, you're more a father to those children on those days. Than, than they, and some people uh, rely on the church to do all the spiritual teaching. The father has a responsibility to do the spiritual teaching. Amen? And, and we should take it very seriously. Because how are kids, how they grow up, is the way they're going to go. Amen? And, and I, I've heard probably uh, some do as I tell them. Not as I do. Not as I do. <laughs> uh, words don't work. <laughs> it's, son, I'm going to do what I tell you. I'm going to live it if I expect you to live it. Amen? And so that's what God says to us as fathers. Live the life. Let the love be seen in you. Let the joy of the Lord be seen in you. Let, let children see you worship God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on. 
Let them see you worship them in the home and in, in every area of your life. Let them see a life that's dedicated to Christ. And you'll begin to see some children's lives begin to be changed because they'll look to you. And they'll not go to others and ask you for advice. They'll go to their dad. They won't go to gang members or any other member. They'll go to their dad for advice. Amen? And, and so we're all the ones. We're set in the home. Grandfathers, great grandfathers, I'm at all, you know. And, and so I believe I have the spiritual responsibility of my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, and my children too. Amen. And so we're going to pray for you this morning, and we're going to believe God to give you wisdom and strength. And sometimes it takes courage to make the right decisions. Amen. Sometimes the answer is no. You don't let a child play with fire. You know it's going to burn. So the answer sometimes is no. You can't do that because it's not going to be good for you. The children see that. They don't see it. But you see it. And you've got to use your wisdom and your courage and your strength to make the right decisions for that or something. Amen? Okay. Let's pray. I'm going to pray for each one of you. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Father, strengthen him. I know he has children and grandchildren, Father. And I pray that his life becomes an example to them. They begin to see the power and the glory of God. They begin to see the victory in his life, God. Fill him with wisdom and instruct him in the ways of righteousness, Father God. Move in his life and bless him, Father. I pray for Charlie right now, God. God, give him the strength, God, to be a, a great example to his children and grandchildren, Father God. Let the love of God shine through him, God. Let wisdom flow through him, God, to touch their lives, to change their lives, Father God. In Jesus, man, we pray, God. We pray for Danny, God, right now, God. Give him the strength he needs. Give him the courage he needs. God, give him the wisdom he needs and the love he needs to make right decisions for his children and grandchildren, God. God, do a mighty work in their lives and in their hearts, Father. We thank you for it, God. We pray for Bobby right now, God. God, we pray for his children and his grandchildren. We lift them up to you, Father God. We pray that you would help Bobby to be an example to them, to be filled with wisdom, to instruct them in the ways of righteousness, Father God. That they would see a, a, the man of God that he is, Father God. And, and God, you would begin to open doors for him, God, to speak the things of God into their life, God. God, we thank you for the wisdom, for the love he has, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. God, we pray for our pastor, God. God, bless him, God. Fill him with wisdom, fill him with love and joy, fill him with the strength you give him, God. God, touch him in every way, God. He's not only a, a, a physical father, but he's a spiritual father. And God, help him to continue to be a light to those around him, Lord God. Bless him with wisdom and knowledge, God. Bless him with the love of God and the spirit of God like a mighty wind blowing through him, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bless my brother, Father God. Hallelujah. Strengthen him every day, God. Yeah. Encourage him in you, God. Yeah. Let your name be glorified yeah. in his life. <laughs> Let your wisdom fill him, God. God, bless his children and grandchildren, God. Yeah. Let him be a strength to them, an encouragement to them, Father God. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray for Larry. Father God, we just lift him up, God. Strengthen him in his walk with you, God. Let your love shine through him. Your wisdom shine through him, God. Touch his children and his great-grandchild. Lord God, let him be an example to them. Let the love of God flow through him like a river, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for Larry, God. Bless him, God. We pray for Ryan, God. We pray for his to have wisdom, Father to give him the strength, to give him the courage to make right decisions in his life, in his child's life, God, in his children, in his daughters, Father God. And we pray for restoration in this relationship, God. We pray that he will be able to see his children, God. And Father God, we just pray every day to fill him with wisdom and love and insight into your spirit, Father, and how to direct his children, Father God. In Jesus' name, God. We pray for Father God. We pray right now for the wisdom of God, the strength of God, to make the right decisions, to, to be courageous in you, Father God. Fill him with your love 
and your patience, Lord of God. Move by the power of your Holy Spirit in his life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen.
the day. Not the date, but the day. I remember. It was on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I, I can tell you what the preacher preached, but I know what the Holy Ghost was saying. You dirty, rotten scoundrel, get up to that altar. <laughs> Uh, and you know that sometimes we, 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 we think, uh, some people, I've talked to people before, and they say, oh, we, we got to get this right and that right. I said, you're never going to get it right till you get to God. Because God's the only one to get it right. Amen? And, and so we need God in our life to get things right in our life. Oh, children's church, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm bad about that, Terry. You have to. Hey! <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, I, I haven't started out with a little humor, so at this morning I am. It's called Pastor Dad. The minister's little daughter was sent to bed with a stomach ache and missed her usual romp with her dad. A few minutes later, she appeared at the top of the stairs and called to her, Mother. Mama, let me talk with Dad. No, my dear, not tonight. Get back in bed. Please, Mama. I said, no, that's fine. Mother, I am very sick, woman, and I must see my pastor at once. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> I'm not going to preach the Father's Day message. If you came to hear a Father's Day message, you come to the wrong church today. I'm going to talk about the necessity of the church. Too often I hear people, I don't need to go to church. And some people, well, what scripture? Well, the only one that really in the Old Testament, it's in Hebrews 10, 25, it says, forsake not. How many knows what that means, forsake not? You're assembling yourself together, but even more so as you see the day approaching. Do we not see the day approaching? Oh, yeah. We we had a, a men's prayer breakfast yesterday morning at IHOP, and uh, we had a great discussion, of, uh, a kind of about the church and and what's going on in the church. A lot of the millenniums today don't think it's necessary to go to church. They they think that they can uh, they're just fine without God. But if your life is not being changed. If, if you're not living a righteous, holy, godly life, then I think that there's something wrong with your theology. And I think that we need church. Not because of Hebrews 10.25, because of Psalms 92, beginning with verse 12, if you'll put that up on the screen for us. He said, the righteous will flourish like the palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of the Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. Talking about you, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> I thought it said Charlie. I, I'm sorry. It said old age. Yeah. And they will stay fresh and green. So you're going to stay fresh and green. There you go. And, and the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. I think that this psalm talks about the church. I think that we need to begin to learn to be planted in the house of God. God didn't call us to be nomads. You know what a nomad is? He travels from place to place. And you know what? Sometimes when you get in the house of God, sometimes when you get set in a church, and the Bible says that God has placed us in the body as it pleases Him. Not as it pleases us. You know what? That, uh, you may not like where God sets you, but if you listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, He may have set you in that place to do something for Him in that place. But too often, if somebody, if the minister preaches something we don't like, we're going to not come back. We're not coming back. We do hurt my feelings. I'm not coming back. And, 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 you're, and, and all kinds of merit excuses. I don't like the music. It's too loud. I don't like the, the players. I don't like a, any number of reasons why we leave a church. But you know what the real reason is? It's spiritual. You're not listening to the to God. You're you're listening to your flesh. You're looking at the thing around you, and you're not listening to God. You need to listen to God. 
The psalmist said the righteous will flourish. First of all, I think this, if you're righteous, you will flourish. There is a twofold righteousness that he's talking about here. The righteous will flourish. It is this. It is the righteousness of justification. When you got saved, God deemed you righteous. Not because you were righteous, but because of his son died that you may become righteous. Amen? You can't be right. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to make you righteous before God. Amen? Because our old flesh, it always wants to do the wrong thing. And so, so the first thing, justification God, is two things appeared here. The second part is sanctification. We are being sanctified. We are being made righteous. And where is all this happening? Listen to this. Planted in the house of the Lord. I'm going to keep coming back to that. We are being planted in the house of the Lord. You know what? Sometimes I'm going to preach things you ain't going to like. <coughs> But if you listen to God, you'll grow and you'll get planted in the house of the Lord. See, planted to me means you're, you're there. You're not a potted plant that can be moved everywhere. You're a planted person in the house of God. Amen? So I'm going to take my pot and go somewhere else. <laughs> so it's a twofold thing. The righteous will flourish. So first off, we've got to get right with God. Amen? You, if you're not right with God, you won't be planted. You'll, you'll lean more to the flesh and not to the spirit, not to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You'll lean more to how it makes you feel or what you see or what you hear. You'll lean more to that way than you'll lean, lean to the Spirit of the Lord because the Spirit of the Lord will begin to speak to you the Word of God. And I guarantee you, if you've been set here by God, you've been set. And you can go anywhere else you want, but you will not be happy till you go back to where God has set you. Amen? Amen. All right. So the threefold righteousness with all the God they possesses, it's imputed. Righteousness is imputed to us. It is implanted in us. And it is exhibited by us. Amen? Righteousness should be exhibited. People should see us living a righteous life. You know what? I, I, I'd be working and somebody starts to tell me uh, uh, something, some joke or something that's uncomfortable. I said, please, I don't want to hear that. Oh, you, you the goody two-shoes? I said, no, but I love God enough not to pollute my atmosphere. And, and, and I'm not a goody two-shoes, by the way, but I love God enough not to listen to trash. And so it's imputed righteousness, but we exhibit that righteousness by the way we live. We live righteously. We don't do what others do. We do what God asks us to do. So how do we flourish and all this? How does it how does the church stay relevant in this world today? How how do we how do we get people to come to the house of God? I believe it's by us beginning to live like we should. Let Christ be seen in you. Let the love of God be seen in you. Let the wisdom of God be seen in you. Let the, the knowledge and the understanding, let the joy and the peace be seen in you because then things will draw people. How many people are paying psychologists and popping pills and everything else just to find peace? You begin to love the peace of God when, when they know that everything in your life is going haywire. And you still walk in peace. You're still not complaining and griping, but you're walking in peace. They begin to see God in you. They begin to see something in you that draws them. That's how we're going to build the church. Us as Christians are going to begin to live right. We're going to be righteous as God's called us to be righteous. And, and that's not self-righteousness. That's the righteousness of God. Uh, I'm not going to be self-righteous because you know what self-righteousness does. It puts you here and everybody else below you. 
I'm better than you. No, we're not better than anybody. We're only because we're only righteous because of God. We didn't do anything to attain to it. God gives us righteousness. Amen. No. So all of us as Christians were to grow. Grow. He said the righteous will what? Flourish. Flourish means growth. We are to grow. You know that what what when a plant stops growing, what's it done? It's dying. And how does a plant grow? We nourish it. We water it. We we get the weeds away. I'm not very good out here. The weeds have almost overtaken there. Uh, 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 but I, I try to get out there and get the weeds. But anyway, the weeds, all of that, see, we have allowed weeds to come into our life that are sapping our strength. We can't grow because we've allowed things to come into our life that is hindering our walk with God and therefore is pulling our strength because you know what the devil does? He compounds everything in your life. Your troubles, your fears, your unbelief, he compounds all those things in your life and they begin to consume you. They stop your spiritual growth and you become stagnant in God and therefore when you come to church, uh, let's see, I, mean, I can tell you a number of things I've heard. Uh, they just don't feed you. You wasn't hungry. You wasn't hungry. I, 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 I've been in lots of churches, heard lots of ministries, and I've always been that some were shouting, and some were running, and some were just standing there preaching the word, but I got fed. I got fed immensely last week for a brother woman. I kept getting this vision of a guy trying to chop a tree down with a dull axe. And that's with us as Christians. We want to try to use everything but what God has given us to use. Go ahead, sister. This Bible is Yeah. Yeah. Sister, whether we realize it or not, we need one another. 
The body cannot be a singular uh, uh, cell. It is a multiple cell body. Amen? And we have eyes, we have ears, we have hands, we have feet. We are, and it takes every part of this to make us whole. And that's the same way in the house of God. If, if we're limiting, we say, well, I don't need that kind of stuff. I don't need to hear the word. I don't need people telling me to go to church. I guess you do, because you ain't going. <laughs> eh. Come on. You know what about some trees? There's many significant events throughout the scripture. Sin originated from eating them from the fruit of the tree. The first falls or covering were made from a fig tree. God promised Abraham a son under an oak tree. Elijah was depressed and suicidal under a juniper tree. Aaron's rod of an almond tree budded and produced fruit. The Ark of the Covenant was made from an Arcadia tree. In Isaiah 55, he says, All trees of the field will clap their hands. I don't want to get into worship on this, but too often we neglect worshiping God, even in His house. Revelation 2, 22, verse 2 says this, In the midst of the street on the other side of the river was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of that tree for the healing of the nation. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem involved the palm tree. On the first day of the Feast of the Tabernacle in Leviticus 23, the Hebrews would take, take palm branches and rejoice before God. The crowd welcomed Jesus, crying, Hosanna, save us. Now we beseech the Jesus' triumphal entry was there based on a palm tree. So the palm tree speaks of not only, it speaks of celebration and salvation. Yes. Yes. We sing a song, palms of victory. We, I get it right. But we wave our palms. Uh, uh, see, there's nothing wrong in raising your hand in the house of God. Amen? Because we come to worship God. Here we are. We are planted in the house of God. God has planted us. God has placed us. We don't make the choice. We listen to the Spirit and He puts us where He wants us. Too often, we make the decision and we're never effective. You may go to another church and you may be used, but you'll never be as effective as you are where God planted you. Amen? Okay. So it's pizza celebration. Psalm 92 verse 12 says this, the righteous shall flourish like palm tree. Today there are 300 species of palms. Trees. 300 species of palm trees. They grow from 3 to 100 feet tall. The date palm produces, oh I've had it wrong. The date palm produces over 300 pounds of dates per year. Was he planted in the house of God? Right? We're talking about trees, us as being trees. We're to produce, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, faith, meekness, gentleness, kindness. The fruit of the Spirit. There's nine of them. Nine is the perfect number. It's the number of completeness. And so God... No, no. <laughs> now you've got me mad. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's nine. <laughs> the number of completeness is where God brings us, and so if He sets us in the house of God, He begins to complete in us. We begin to grow in our faith. We begin to grow in our love. We begin to grow in our joy. And you as Christians in this house have a, 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 ability, a, a responsibility to act like God as Christians. Amen? Amen. Love you, Annie. 
You wouldn't want to come in you see you this Sunday, rejoice and sing a beautiful song, and next Sunday, look like you lost your best friend. Because we can't lose our best friend. He's a friend who's taken closer than a brother. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? And so when we as Christians, we're to begin to bear the responsibility of worship to God. And our worship is not based on what we feel or see or hear. Our worship is based on God who forgave us our sins and sent his son to cleanse us from. That's what our worship's based on. It's not based on how, how good a week I had. God wants us to flourish in his house. We have to begin to learn to get past what has happened in our life and begin to worship God with everything. The Bible says this, how are we to worship God? With all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We are to worship God that way. And so when we begin to get planted in the house of God and God begins to do things in our life, I hope that everyone that's ever come here, it's not like they've grown somewhat in this church because we begin to grow in the love of God. And if we exemplify that love, if we exemplify, I've had people come and tell me, so I know one thing about your church, they love people. I said, I know that. And that's not because of us, that's because of what God has done in our lives. Because God has done some things in my heart that made me love people. Because at one time I chose not to love some. And I couldn't flourish. I couldn't grow. It was a hindering my walk with God. And I didn't even realize it until that person showed up in my life and don't pray for to God to help you love somebody if you don't want your enemy to come around. And I, I, God sent this person into my life and I felt he did me a great wrong in the pulpit, in the church. And when I see him, I, all that, I said, I can't believe he's here at my church. I said, my church. <laughs> Not God's church, it was my church. <laughs> and for six months, he came faithfully. And then when we moved over here, he came over here and he helped me work from the building. He was such a big help. And, and then one day he comes up to me. We're out there working. He said, I just got I gotta tell you something. I did do wrong. I'm sorry. Right. Right. This is what God said. He tell him you're wrong. And you held a grudge against him. Come on, brother. It's not easy for you to do. But I was wrong. I knew the Spirit of God. And I knew that this was hindering me. And God said, I'm building this church the way I want it built. And if you don't get it right, you're not going to get the church. This church is not going to get right. Amen. And so I had to, to embrace him and tell him that I loved him and that I was sorry because I had spoken evil of him and, and, and said things I should not have said. See, there's, there's, I'm getting off a little bit. We talked a little bit about this in the prayer meeting, is that there's two ways to handle offense. How somebody offends you, right? You can go to uh, Sister Joy. And you can talk bad about them and do all that, and you're hurting her, too. You're putting garbage in her life. And you're tainting her opinion of that person. Because you're, you're hurt. And so when we are hurt, we say things we ordinarily would not say. I'm talking to you about how we're going to grow in this church. How this church is going to flourish like the palm trees of Lebanon. And, and, and the cedars of Lebanon. How we're going to flourish. And so how we handle opinions, how we do that, we go to God. We don't go to somebody else and talk about how bad they hurt me. You see, this is how this snowballs. This gets worse. If we begin to go talk to Sister Joyce, and, 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 and even Sister Joyce does not talk to anybody else about it. But if all of a sudden God reconciles me in that person, 
and I begin to love that person, Sister Joy says, what's going on? And her opinion is tainted because of what I have said. And so therefore, people can't understand how we can love somebody that's hurt us, but that's because of the Holy Spirit. That's because of God doing a work in our heart, in our life, because I want to tell you, God does not like offenses. God does not like us holding grudges or hating people or being angry with people or treating people unkind. God does not like it. And sometimes God requires of you to go to that person and ask them to forgive you. You can't grow. You can't... Uh, I'm going to tell you, that's like putting a stump in your growth. You're going to stop on a level, and, and if you don't watch it, that thing will begin to consume you and overtake you till it's in your mind constantly. And every time you see that person, there's evil thoughts come in your mind toward that person. It could be in families. It could be in churches. It could be in jobs. It could be anywhere. If we're going to grow as a church, if we're going to be like the palm trees of Lebanon, if we're going to be planted in the house of God, we've got to begin to listen to the power of the Holy Spirit. If I've offended anybody in this church, I am, I'll get down on my knees and I'll beg your forgiveness because I do not intend to offend anybody. I love God's people. I love people generally. Mm. But I was in a bad place with that brother. And I'm glad God spoke to my heart. And I'm glad I obeyed him. Because I could have just said, I could have just brushed it off. You know, I was just as wrong as he was. I was just as wrong as he was. See, we've had uh, people tell us, I can't come here. You let them come here. I think, are you a Christian? What do you want me to do? Stand by the back door and tell them not to come in? Yep. Because somebody here don't like you. Can't do that. I might as well close the door and lock the door if I'm going to do something like that. I've done left the kingdom of God. I'm now in the flesh. And I'm trying to please people more than God. And so we've had people come and tell us that, but we just we just put it in God's hand and let him take care of it. I'm kind of getting off here, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, just as Clark said it earlier, the, the palm tree, uh, even in the worst of storms and hurricane, how many have ever seen hurricane wind and seen that palm tree just bent to the ground? As soon as that wind lets up, it pops right back up. See, brother and sister, we're going to face storms in our life, and they're going to bend us, but they don't have the power to break us because we have the Holy Spirit within us that enables us to stand against the worst of storms in our life. Come on, brother and sister. The enemy is going to pour one storm after another in your life. There's going to be lightnings and thunder, and he's going to make it sound like it's the worst situation in the world, and he's going to bend you as low as he can get you. But when the power of the Holy Ghost comes into your life and the love of God overtakes you, it's popped right back up. He, he may bend you, but he can't break you. Amen. And you know what? The palm tree's roots sink so deep into the ground, even in the desert, they sink deep, deep into the ground until they find a source of water. And they draw from that. And if the palm tree is the one tree that is alive on the inside. You know every tree is dead inside except for the palm tree? The palm tree has life with inside of it. Where does our life come from? Inside. Where do we draw from? Our roots draw deep from the word of God. And they're sibling together in his house. They, our roots, that's where our water comes from. And when you put a bunch of palm trees together, they begin to draw, they begin to grow, and they begin to provide something. We as Christians are to provide something. What do they provide? They provide shade in the desert. They, they, they provide fruit when you're hungry. Uh, 
uh, they provide palm leaves to praise God with. Uh, they, they provide a lot of things. And so even though the enemy likes to try to blow you out of the church, bend you over, get you all upset, get you all angry, get you all, uh, I don't need to go to church. Then people are a bunch of nuts and, and, and they can't tell me how to live. I'm not trying to tell you how to live. I'm telling you what the Bible says. It's up to you how you live. It's up to you. Do you want to live a righteous life that's going to affect people around you and going to and, and some people? I just don't understand why, how come I can't talk to people about God. Maybe it's because of where you live. Maybe where you live. And so that palm tree, he provides food. He, he, he provides everything. The palm tree not only survives, but it flourishes. Anybody ever felt like they've been in a desert? That suit, that, that, that roots of the palm tree, they burrow down through the burning sand till they find the source of water. Amen? That's right. Galatians, we have to go deep, brother and sister. We should not be shallow Christians. Shallow Christians only go to church when they feel like it. They only praise God when they feel like it. Uh, they only give when they feel like it. Uh, they only do whatever, whatever feel. That's what I feel. That's what I feel like. That's what I'm going to do. You know, that's that's a shallow Christian. But Paul asks us to go deep. He says in Galatians 2:20, "I am crucified with Christ." Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul was going deep. He was seeking his roots down so that when the storms came, and storms came to Paul's life, you know, Paul called them light afflictions. My goodness. You ever been stoned? You ever been beaten? Shipwrecked? Snake bite? You can tell me my snake bite. I don't know. Uh, but Paul went through all those things. And, and he, what he was saying, uh, he also said this, these things happened to me for the furtherance of the gospel. I'm going deep. I'm not going to be a shallow Christian that only does things when I feel like it. I'm going to go deep with God. I'm going to become that palm tree in the house of God. And I'm going to provide shade for those around me. And I'm going to provide food for those around me. I'm going to be one who flourishes in God's house. And I'm going to flourish wherever I'm at. Because wherever I'm at, that's the church. I'm at the job. The church is there. I'm at, in my home, the church is there. I'm in my neighborhood, the church is there. Wherever I am, that's the church. Amen? And so I'm going to flourish in all those areas because that's where God has planted me. And that's where I'm going to grow and prosper. But to go deep, we have to be prayer warriors. First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Not theology, but neology. Get down on your knees and pray before God. Seek His faith. Give God some time so that He can begin to fertilize your soil and you begin to go deep and you begin to hear from God. Church, uh, uh, sister, mother, we need to hear from God. Used to be, people would be praying all week long about church and God would give them a word for somebody. And you, they go and they give that word and the exact thing they needed. Sister B, God bless her. Uh, uh, one time we was uh, in the church and she sang this, uh, I'm burning my bridges, I won't turn back. And she came up, she started singing, holding my hand. And that was a word for me. Because God had said, don't turn back. God always confirms His word. Amen? I'm going to keep you a little long if you let me, let me finish this if you allow me to. 
I quoted this verse earlier in Hebrews 10.25, the only one that most Christians use, but I believe we fail to see the whole picture when we just quote that one verse, that not forsaking the assembly of God. I believe we don't see the whole scripture that when we come into the house of God and God plants us in this place and we begin to flourish in him, we begin to grow in him, we begin to understand God's word more, and we begin to understand how we're to live our lives, we begin to flourish in this house, and this house will flourish. This house will flourish. And so... I'm glad for Hebrews 10.25. Brother and sister, we need to have a greater concept of that. We need to understand the significance of the church and why God has kept the church going for thousands of years. Because we need one another. We need one another. They, uh, Paul went through that whole scenario. He said, can the eyes say to the ear, I don't need you? They wouldn't be the hearing. Would it, would it be all seeing? You know, hearing? Or can the foot say to the hand, I don't need you? Then where would it be the walking? Come on, brother and sister, we need one another. Each one of us have a specific thing that God has put us in this body for so that we can flourish, so that we can provide for one another. I'm not the only provider in this church. Every one of us are providers. Every one of us have a duty. See, when they sing, they're ministering to us. They're worshiping God. What they're doing is trying to bring us into the presence of God. And if we sit there like this, just try to get me to sing. We ain't going to. You can stay right there. We're going to sing anyway. We're going to have a good time. You can go over there with the worst thing I've ever seen. That's because of you. <laughs> it wasn't because of the worship, it was you that caused it to be that way. The other person, I mean, you know, they, they could say, Dan, you didn't sing very well. That's because they were in the right place. That's where they were in the right place. And so we can be critical of one another and we can hurt one another, or we can love one another and grow in the grace and the mercy of God and begin to understand how God operates in the church, in this building, in any building, in Victor Tabernacle, wherever, God wants to do something in his church once again. I'm tired of the church bashing. I'm tired of all that stuff. I am sick of to death of it. When are we going to love the church again? When are we going to love God's people again? When are we going to do what God asks us and not do what we want or pleases us? Sometimes we have to do things that don't please us. I go to work. I didn't please me. The money pleased me, but the work didn't please me. If I could find a job where I didn't have to work and got paid, I'd be all right. And this is another thing about the palm tree. As we grow, as we grow, our fruit matures. Our love matures. Our, our joy mature, matures. Our, our wisdom matures. And we don't have to get pumped up to come to worship God. We're already pumped up. We're ready to worship God. We're ready to forsake all and follow Him. We're ready because our fruit is beginning to mature. We're growing. That date tree, that, that palm tree, its dates as it grows get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. The older the tree, the sweeter the fruit. And I'm not talking about old people. Young people can be just as mature as an old person. Some old people get rotten and crotchy. <laughs> Their fruit's no good for anybody. Better spit that out. <laughs> as we grow in God, as we mature, as we get planted in the house of God, and we and we find this is where God wants to mature us and grow us. And we begin to give off a sweetness about life that people want. 
They want it. They want what you've got. I, 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 I'm not praying, but I, I've had people tell me, they said, why are you so, whistling? Why are you so happy all the time? I said, because my happiness is not based on what's going on around me. It's based on one person, and his name is Jesus. And so I can whistle and I can sing every day of the week, and if the storms have got me bent to the ground, I can still sing for him. Because I know where I'm going. This world is but a vapor. This life is but a vapor, and it soon passes away. But one day, I will stand in eternity with my Savior, and I want Him to know every day I loved Him, and I loved His people, and I loved all that He had for me to do. I loved God. I don't want Him to wonder if I loved Him. I want Him to know I loved Him. And I want people to know I love them. So that palm tree, as it matures, it begins to get more flourishing, more full, more better fruit. As the palm tree gets older, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. And this is another thing about the palm tree, and I'm getting ready to close. The palm tree, have you ever seen a palm tree? They have like bands around it. You know what the enemy tries to do to us sometimes? Put bands around us. You know what a palm tree does? It breaks those bands. As it grows, it begins to break those things in your life. You know what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you? He wants to break some things in your life. So that, because as long as that band's around you, it's going to hinder your growth. But when you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to do it in your life, you'll begin to break some things in your life. God has showed many times how God has broken some angles and stuff in his life because it hindered his growth. And so uh, as that tree grows, that band begin to break. And they begin to grow bigger and stronger and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. And you just want to reach out and grab me. I want to fight with that. I want some of that love they got. I want that joy they got. I want that peace they got. I want to flourish like they do. I, I want to go to their church because I something's happening with them. Amen? we got to get excited about God. we got to get excited about God's house again. If we're just kind of, well, it's Sunday. got to go to church. And you lost it somewhere along the line. Because you should be excited. You should get up in the morning. Yay, it's Sunday! Yeah. I'm going to church! I'm going to get my praise on! I'm going to give God all the glory! I'm going to just spread some joy in that church today. I don't mind leaping. I don't mind looking foolish because I know whom I serve and I am confident in my salvation and I know that he is working on my behalf because Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Every day I will flourish in him. Every day I will produce better fruit in my life. Every day I will grow in him. Every day I will know him in a greater way. God just wants to reveal himself to you. He's not hidden. He wants to reveal himself to you. And as we grow, I think mean, we get to the leaven of truth. The cedar is aware of it, but sister talked a little bit about that. Good enough. No, the other thing about a palm tree, it's an evergreen tree. It produces life of its own. It doesn't need an outside source. It draws deep from it. It lives the, the inside, it comes outside. Well, what a change in my life. Jesus working on the inside. So forth, making me better. No one changes made in me inside. The spirit comes out. 
It's better than you name it, and you just stay come back. If you love people and you love God, it'll come out. And you'll grow, and you'll mature, and your love will grow, and you can love your enemies. For Jesus said, love comes to be spiteful against you. Pray for those who are spiteful against you. Love those who are against you. Come on, this is a lesson. God wants us to flourish. I want you to understand why we have church. We don't have church just to come here and sing a few songs and, and, and hear a message. You can go anywhere in this town and have that. But we have church to begin to flourish, that, that, that we'll begin to produce fruit in our lives that will begin to attract people because why? We love people. We love people. We don't care if they're addiction or, or what their problems are. We love them enough to love them like God loves them. And we don't pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to do a work on the inside, changing the outside. Come on. We've got to begin to love one another. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't, do, we can't do church the way we've been doing it. It's got to be, it's got to be different. It's got to change. We, we, as a people, have got to change. We, we've got to begin to love God and love God's people as God loves. Do you really, have you ever asked yourself, do you really love God? And what's the evidence of your love for God? If, if your life was to be put on uh, in court and they wanted you to prove that you love God, how could you prove it? If you look back at your life and say, yeah, my life says I love God. I got evidence. I, 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 I talk. I, you know, come on, brother, sister. We, we got to do things different. We got to be able to do what God asks us. This is not just a building. Uh, it, well, this is a building, but we are the building. We are the church. And God expects us to flourish, to grow, to nurture one another, to help one another, to love one another. That's what God expects us to do. And when somebody gets hurt in this church, you don't I, 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 I've cried many times when somebody gets hurt. And, and so I, I just want you to know how much God loves you today. I hope that I have maybe not made anybody cry today. But I hope that it encourage you to realize this is what God has planted you. I guess where God wants to nurture you and you to grow and produce something in your life that people want. Amen? Amen. Let's go. Father, we are so grateful today for each and every person in this house. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts by the God. For us to begin to realize that we are the planning of the Lord and that you expect us to begin to grow and mature in you, God. That your love will begin to, to grow in our lives. Your joy, your peace, your kindness, your long-suffering, all will begin to grow in us, Father. God, we will begin to be those. We will begin to begin to provide for those who are in need. Father, we ask that you bless each one of them and strengthen them in their walk and encourage them, God. Let them seek you out. Hungry and thirst for you. In Jesus' name.